the record in here. So we have that. Uh, here goes the encoder in here. Hi, this is Sherry Richards. And this is Karen Kalmastan. And welcome to Inspired Good Fat Life, where we explore what it takes to live a modern, healthy life and so much more. Hey, Karen. Hey, Sherry. Good morning. How are you? Good, good, good. How are you? Good. I'm oh really excited about today. Me too. I could hardly sleep last night, and, it, <laughs> and this time it wasn't so much from nerves. It was excitement. So Exactly. Excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love You're to talk about love. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, and our, special, and our special guest is such a delight, and uh, she's got such a great uh, topic to talk about. So um, so today, let's just kind of dive in. We're going to be talking about um, eight kinds of love, and um, I'm sure you would agree, Karen, that the world needs more love, right? <laughs> yes, exactly, especially now. So uh, we thought we'd talk about um, just the eight types of love and... Um, how to get it out there and how to, and with the focus on loving yourself the most, right? Because that's where it stems from first. You have to love yourself so you can spread love around. Right, right. So, um, and uh, we were going to, you know, we had initially talked about um, finding a, a great poem or something to start with. And, yeah. um, you know, nothing was just resonated with me. I, I read through numbers of them and they were wonderful, but they just didn't feel right. And so I kind of asked, it's like something, you know, ask the universe, bring me something. Well, Brene Brown popped up um, just yeah. out of the blue um, of this site that um, I have. And I just thought it was maybe some of the things that she says, you know, for those of you who don't know Brene Brown, she does a lot of research on vulnerability and um, showing up. And um, so I think uh, she, and she really talks about our humanity and imperfections and how we all have them. But if we can um, step into those, we can have really a, a rich life. So one of them, one of the things I just wanted to read is vulnerability is not winning or losing. It's having the courage to show up and be seen when we have no control over the outcome. And I think that, um, what our topic today is we don't have control over the outcome but there's but by being willing to step in with courage uh we can be open to so much as you're going to kind of share a little bit today what happened with you right? yes exactly and um and you do have to be courageous to love and to uh just want to just love and even if it doesn't get reciprocated back to you you know that it'll be passed on maybe to somebody else so there's n you have to be courageous and vulnerable to love somebody but um you have to have the willingness to do it and i really uh, appreciate her work and i think that's a great poem thank you sherry for sharing that so so cool so karen do you want to yeah. just kind of jump in yeah um, why don't you just kind of like lead us through what are the sure. eight different kinds all right, so the first one is called uh, philia or philia, however you want to pronounce it. And it's affectionate love, like friendship love, like the love you and I have for each other. And um, I know uh, you have so many friends and Linda is our friend who we're going to interview today. Can you give me an example about of one of the ways that you that shows up in your life? Oh, I mean, just even having this conversation, right? Right. It's, it's really, it really came about because we just wanted to be able to share the things that we're learning that's, that's really um, enriched our lives and helped our lives be better. Mm -hmm. right? So that's, and it's so much more fun when you can do it with somebody that you care about um, at your side than sharing that rather than just going it alone. We are so lucky. And that is a perfect example, Sherry, because basically um, the definition of it is a, the exchange of beliefs and imperfections, right? Oh, <laughs> so yeah. sometimes we yeah. have more imperfections and beliefs, some of us more than others, but that's exactly what the definition is for. So, um, And then the second one is pragma, which is enduring love, mature, um, and it deepens over time. Um, and ways to show that would be put in effort, um, and in and, and a reciprocal relationship. So um, I think in, a good example of enduring love is love that you may have with friends that you, you don't see a lot, but you, you reconnect with them. And it's just like you've never left each other. And you just uh, are always, you kind of roll up your sleeves and you're there for the duration. You're like, you're part of my tribe. 
you're part of my people and I want to have an enduring relationship with you. Yeah, like no matter what. My, my two um, dearest friends are, are, we met at cheerleading tryouts when we were 12, 12 years old, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like the summer before seventh Go grade. Go right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the summer before seventh grade. And, um, and we've all lived all over the place. We've um, since, you know, we grew up and you're right. There's something magic about that. You just pick up where you left off and you know that no matter where they are in the world, all you'd have to say is I need you and they'd be there in a heartbeat. Yeah. And there's also just people that you always, always like, no matter what, like you said, what they go through or anything, you just know that you will always love them and they will always love you. So I, right. that is great. And then number uh, three is called uh, storage or familiar love, which the ways that that shows up um, is gratitude to people close to you. And I know you and I really um, try to live an attitude of gratitude, right? Right. So right. Um, fam familiar love, I think is um, tricky, right? Because I think that's where people get a little bit um, have challenges with familiar love. They think love needs to be like uh, uh, fireworks and explosions, but sometimes the familiar um, can be wonderful as well. Oh, I, I, and it's probably, uh, my guess would be, it's one of the easiest to take for granted. Right? For sure. If you're so familiar yeah. with, with the people that you just, I don't know, you just don't acknowledge how grateful that you are in there uh, to have them in their life and the little things that they do all the time. Yeah, I guess what comes to my mind is my siblings, right? I'm so familiar with them. I know every single thing about their entire beings, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you have to, um, you have to remember that that is one that is love, right? Because you take the t you actually know these people and they're part of your experience and it's so familiar. Um, and it also helps you self love because they're a lot like you. Also cousins, I find that cousins, um, I have a great relationship with my cousins and that is like the best familiar love to me. We just, that's a, um, that's a great example because your cousins are, yeah, they're, they're like you, but they're a like, little bit like, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And they're always there at the, I mean, at least my cousins were always there when we were growing up at all the family stuff. And um, yes, I, I just love the cousin love because, um, you're you're similar and you come from the same family but you're sort of just like one one point separated from each other so you're a little bit different it's a little bit like having a friend more but also you got you have each other's back it just it's we just i'm just so blessed and fortunate that my cousins and i are so close i mean there's some actually some of my best friends that's great. You just, I mean, you just inspired me to reach out to my cousins. I'm a talk. Right. We're all like over that. the place. We're all over yeah. the place. So yeah. So I, I need to do that. I'm writing that down, Karen. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and fifth is uh, Lotus or Lutus love, which is considered playful love. Um, and the ways to express this is through flirtation um, and interest and admire people. So um, that's kind of fun to do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I we think all, that. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, we just all kind of need to play more. It's it's harmless flirty. Yeah, and I think flirty is more like a, um, I I see you and I see the beauty in you and I'm just recognizing it. You know, that's all right. really to me. That's all flirting really is. Is like I see you. You know. Yeah. It's like a and, willingness and a recognition. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. I love that. And then six, this is the one that you uh, try to avoid. This is mania love, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Which mania love, and we kind of actually touched base on this yesterday, you and I with a friend, of like it's obsessed love, right? So um, where you're sort of obsessed with the other person, they may not love you back. It might be unrequited. And probably if we're all honest with ourselves, we might have all had that in our life or it might be the way somebody feels about someone they never met, like a star or something so basically everything I've read about mania, mania love is the first thing they say is you just want to avoid this kind of love <laughs> and, and sort of try to, if nothing yeah. else because it's probably heartbreaking well yeah and you want to um try to cultivate uh reciprocal love right 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 uh, at least on some level yeah yeah and maybe just change what you consider love maybe to just admire or respect right so think of it more in a healthy way but unfortunately you know, the word mania is never seen as healthy, but I, I always say, you know, love is love, right? <laughs> so I'd rather have mania love than no love. <laughs> um, and then the next one, number seven, is agape love. And this is selfless love. 
-hmm. And the ways to express this, and you do this so well, um, and so does Linda, our guest, um, is unconditional love in any situation. Oh, and thank you for that. Um, yeah, that's that is a that's that's really at the end of the day, that's what's that's priceless, isn't it? It really is. And I think that especially now, if we all look at we just want to have unconditional love and the willingness to understand unconditionally, um, it might help us progress into the future and maybe uh, help change some of the issues we're going through now. Right. That that seek. I always love, you know, Stephen Covey's you know, seek first to understand. Um, right. Because it's impossible to move through. Um, to, to move through uh, many of the issues that are popping up right now if we can't find some that common ground so we can understand each other and move that conversation forward. And also having um, unconditional love is, you know, especially like with your kids and your family, they're always going to have a soft place to land with you. And they're always going to always see you with love. I think it's the most, to me, it's the most beautiful love. And um, I'm not interested in anyone that's, uh, doesn't want to have love unconditionally um, as part of a relationship with friends or family, like either you're in or you're out, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's for me. <laughs> that, that's been, you know, it's funny. It's um, that was being grandparents. Now um, I had amazing grandparents uh, that were, they loved me. I know they loved me just no matter what I could do no wrong. Right. I mean, and, and that, at least that's how I felt. And there's something really magic about that. And my husband never really had that. And, you know, I've talked to lots of people that never had that. And there's a magic to that. And now being grandparents, it's like we just want those little ones to just uh, experience love that no matter what, you know, Grandma, Grandma Sherry and Grandpa Bob are here and their other grandparents. Yeah. Can you explain that a little bit, how it differs from, because you feel that way with your child, but I, I can see with my friends that have grandchildren, it is different. And I can feel that when my children have children that I'm going to feel differently and um, almost in a deeper sense. Could you explain that it's, little bit of a difference? It, it's really kind of hard to explain. On the other hand, I mean, like as a mom, you know, as a mom, uh, we, we love our kids just so much. You do anything for them. Um, but there's still that sense of wanting them to be sex successful and happy and to be good moms. Right. Yeah. So we want our kids to do well and succeed and be happy. So there's that stress there right. but with our grandkids. It's like, we just get to love them because we <laughs> yeah. let their parents worry about, you know, them being successful and all that stuff. So yeah, it's, it's just, there's a different, um, it's different and it's the same. It's just, um, it's magic. It's just magic. Yeah. That's all I can uh, say. And with, I can this, tell. and with this, you know, it's been interesting with the um, virus and then all of the stuff that's come out uh, since then, it just reinforces how special, how special just really being loved and seen is, um, you know, for all of us, you know, we just want, we want to, you, if you listen to what people are saying, they want to be seen and valued and loved for just who they are. Yeah, that's true. I really, really believe that. And um, before I go on to that, before I forget, I know we want to talk about just, I had a meditation and, and in my meditation, what came up to me is that every single person that you meet every day is there to help you be your highest self. And you should look in their eyes and, and see them because they're really, truly there for a reason to help lift you. So I, that just really struck me that that is love, right? Even like the person waiting at your table, anybody, your Uber driver, anybody, you know, um, that they are there at the because of love. Store. Yeah, yeah. At some level, at some level because of love. Because of love. That's wonderful. I love that. And it, and if we can remember that, right, it keeps us yeah. in the present moment and mindful and grateful for really the blessings that we do have. Yes. And another thing that I heard is that, um, think of all the things and all the universe and all the time and all the love that loved you into an existence, right? We are all here because people loved each other in one form or another, physically, mentally. That's why we're here. So that's where it all starts, right? Love. love. And so- 
And then the, the, the last one is self-love. And that's what we're going to get into with Linda. And this is really important. We said that this is really sort of the foundation that you have to love yourself and the ways that this shows up is, you know, respecting and appreciating yourself. So let's get to our guest. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, she does a great job doing helping yeah. people do this. I'm excited. She does. So let me just before, um, as, so let me introduce Linda a little yeah. bit. Yeah. She is a, uh, Linda uh, Michelle Doble is a portrait artist and the founder of the Linda Michelle Doble Photography. Uh, she, op she operates this in her residential studio in Brighton, Michigan, as well as she goes off-site locations throughout the um, country. Linda's love of photography began early in life with inspiration coming from her parents, high school photography teacher, and having been surrounded as a child with beautiful publications like National Geographic and Vogue. It's too bad she didn't have good fat life at that time. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Linda. Hi. Yeah, so the, um, the curiosity of people and culture drove Linda's passion to explore personality through her lens. So Linda, in order to capture a person's emotions and true self, it's important that they feel comfortable enough to reveal themselves to her. As an artist, I see my role as creating images, not just taking photographs. And that's really Absolutely. the heart of the work you do, as I understand, Linda, and why we're so excited to talk to you today. So Thank welcome. You. Welcome. Thank you. Well, I do have the Good oh, yeah. Life magazine. <laughs> oh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed. I'm yeah. kidding. I'm kidding. You know I love it. I love yeah. it every second of it. Yeah. That's women's, that's women's portraiture. Well, I have been um, fortunate enough to be uh, photographed by you, Linda, and um, it really has changed my life in so many ways. And I thought maybe we could just start from the beginning and walk us through the process of what you do and talk about how you prepare people to sure. sort of get to the space where um, they can be in that self-love moment. You can capture the, their inner beauty. Absolutely. Well, okay. first of all, thank you for having me, ladies. Absolutely. Um, so... You know, my mission statement pretty much uh, describes how I'm passionate about this, and it's celebrating the modern woman through feminine portraiture. So we've heard the term boudoir, um, sexy images is the first thing people come up with. I photograph intimate images, not so much the sexy part. Um, I'm more about coming into your power, your confidence, and your self-love. Yes, I definitely, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely see that in all your work. And um, I've been fortunate enough to be photographed by you as well as see you photograph other people. Thank you. And you, you really have, um, you hold space for people to be able to be themselves. Um, but tell us a little bit about like the prep, like don't you have them fill out some sort of like- um, Questionnaire. Oh, questionnaire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I have women that reach out to me even two years in advance because there's this process that we all go through, right? Right. Whether we're on this new journey, whether maybe the kids are out of the house, maybe the kids are in the house and you need a reminder. Yeah. Um, there's all different reasons that women do this. It could be a new bride that wants to surprise uh, her future husband. Um, it could be someone maybe newly divorced, maybe someone that has just been diagnosed with breast cancer and wants to document. So these conversations can go long because you basically are letting out your vulnerability to right. come to me, trust me, mm -hmm. trust my team who you've uh, you know, been fortunate to work with Natasha and Carly. Exactly. Um, so basically, once we initially talk on the phone, you are going to via email receive a questionnaire. And that questionnaire is not only helpful for me, it's very helpful for you because in one sense, it's almost like journaling. It's yeah, going to ask sure. you questions that you're going to be real, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, are, what are your comfort levels? What are you comfortable about your body? What are your favorite? What is your least? We really break that down. That's going to guide me how we take your session, right? You were fortunate enough that you were gifted at this to celebrate yourself, right? And I remember how nervous you were, I right? Was, yeah. And even though we think we are ready for this, all that stuff over the years that have come into our heads, it, it, it reappears. 
there's this process. It's a workout process, actually, before you even come into the studio. I can definitely right? speak to that. Yeah, my great <laughs> friends who are I love so much, they gave me the gift of really self-worth, but it felt very heavy and after meeting you and going through the process. I was very nervous, but then uh, you guided me through it, which is so lovely how you do that, uh, Linda, and held this yeah. space. And I really was able to open up and I've seen you do that with other people. Um, and can you just tell us a little bit about why um, when you do do the the photographs, um, when you do have the reveal, you don't allow people to bring their spouse or their significant other, or maybe a person that um, sees them as sexy, why you don't allow mm -hmm. that them usually to bring the person to the reveal? Yeah, great question. And that's because this is strictly about them. We have women that come in here and think initially they're doing this session for the significant other. In the end, it turns out being for them. It's that empowering. Um, we have women that sit here for the reveal and break down crying and say, I haven't seen myself like this for 40 years. Yeah. This is what everybody's telling me, but I need to visually experience it and see it myself to believe it. Um, so no, I want this just about them because as women, how much time do we have just to ourselves, right? right. Um, you know, we're the wives, the mothers, the employees. Um, and as typical women, we tend to put everything else first before us. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really strict about that. I want just them here. I really love that about um, your process. And then um, what I've noticed in your, in your photographs, it's really about the honesty and the compassion and the connection and the auth authenticity, movement, thoughtfulness, transparency. How do, you, how do you help bring that out in people? Thank you. Well, that questionnaire is my starter. Yeah. Um, some is intuitive. Uh, I love working one-on-one -on -one with people and with a long background of patient care also. Uh, I have always had a love for people. My father was a hairstylist, so I started in that industry where it was all about making women feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and if you probably recall that first 45 minutes, it's just breaking the ice, yeah. right? It's where I say, make that first outfit something you're just comfortable in. We're gonna talk about posing. We're gonna touch base on emotions. You may cry, but we're going to bring some things up and we're going to work through this together. We're going to get past all those roadblocks. We get to a point in our life where we say, you know what? Screw it. This is me. I'm here to celebrate me. This is my story. Exactly. And we right? all have beauty. We're all beautiful, right? Absolutely. And you're able somehow to pull that out of people. What is um, the most common thing you hear from people about loving themselves or possibly not loving themselves and how do you um bridge that gap again like yeah. i know i've seen in some of the uh and i, I see some that of the as well or i don't even hear their true background story during a session it's when we come to the actual reveal i was fortunate enough to be raised in a home that we never spoke about weight diets anything of that sort doing this 10 years i'm amazed what i've learned of how many women have grown up in homes like that. Clients who mothers were constantly picking on them about, you could lose 15, you could this and that. Oh, don't wear that. A lot of that starts early on. Oh, for sure, yeah. Right? And when we think we've buried it or worked through it, a lot of it comes up, right? Um, they see a different light though when they see their images. And you know, I'm not a heavy Photoshopper, I'm not right. about doing any editing contouring. This is really you. I want to celebrate you, right? This is about body positivity. You know what I love the most too? Oh, go ahead, Sherry. Oh, no, okay. So, so Karen, I was wondering, so tell, uh, do you want to tell our um, viewers a little bit about how it changed your life going through this process? Mm. Oh, yeah, sure. I would love to. Um, well, <laughs> well, from the beginning, you know, I got this lovely gift from my friends and I was, um, it made me cry that they gave it to me, number one, because it was so lovely and thoughtful. And then I immediately went, 
and felt like oh, that yeah. weight that we talked about, like, oh, I, you know, I'm sexy, like, oh, naked, you know, all those things <laughs> went through my head. And then it yeah. felt like a heavy, heavy, like, I don't want to talk about it. And they kept saying, mm -hmm. did you, what are you planning? What are you doing? And I'm like, I can't even wrap my head around this. Um, and then also with the, you know, I'm like, I'm not a lingerie person. Who, who, who is Karen? And so it really made me think about it, right? And so Linda, when I came to you and I brought all my stuff and Carly and um, I forget, I'm blanking on the other girl's how, name, how Natasha. Many, how many suitcases? Oh, so many suitcases. Once I started the process, um, Sherry couldn't stop me. Oh and, my. Uh, <laughs> and once I got there, it was so great because um, it was fun to share with uh, Carly and, and Natasha mm -hmm. and Linda. Um, all the things that I brought and you could tell that I was sharing myself with them. They're like, Oh, I wouldn't have thought of that. Or I wouldn't have done that. And then it came together so wonderfully. And I felt like it was truly me. It did. Yeah. It represented you 100%. And that is our goal. Whether you want to come in and have full professional hair, makeup and lashes, or you say, you know what? No makeup. I'm going bare me, but yeah. your clothes choices, everything was you. And your hair and makeup was based upon that also, right? Exactly. We represented and then, you. Yeah. And then so many great opportunities, just like this podcast. So yeah. <laughs> after I got pictures back, I'm like, oh, I guess I do have like a lot of work and I'm sort of interesting person. And it really just made me see, even though it was aesthetic and one dimensional in all the picture, it made me see my value and how I I can be. And that, um, I have value in the world to put out there, right? So then Absolutely. Um, after seeing those photographs, um, I, you know, with Sherry, I'm like, well, I guess I could probably do a cover. And then it was so lovely being on the cover. And um, even though I'm not traditional looking, you know, person with green hair and everything, I think people, they, they've responded to it like, oh, I never would have put any of those things together, but somehow it works. So that's it stunning. That was so that, stunning. Yeah. Yeah, I, feel like that, um, I realized that is sort of one of my gifts. And Sherry, you helped me realize that too, is that I sort of have a gift of putting things together, kind of setting it out there in a different way um, that people maybe, it kind of turns things on its ears a bit. So that's what really has brought me here today on the podcast and working with the magazine and doing photo shoots with you, Linda, and helping other people. So I've been fortunate enough to work with Linda a little bit with a friend and also. Um, with the magazine so it really has changed my life many many ways um and i do i do look at myself completely different like i can see that i am beautiful inside and out a pep in your step <laughs> i have women that'll come back for for the reveal and they'll tell me well after the session i went to the grocery store and I was pushing that cart and I was just feeling a little peppy there, right? There's, there's this empowerment that took place. And they're like, yeah. I didn't even want to take off my makeup. I have to call the girlfriends just for a lunch date. Feeling so yeah. good. How, well, how often do we take four hours just for ourselves? Right. So, right? so as you're talking, I'm, I, so this is a practical thing, right? Yeah. So my, um, I've mentioned that I have grandchildren now. Well, mm -hmm. my uh, son's family just moved into this beautiful home with a big pool in the back, right? And my grandkids love to swim, oh. my little three-year-old. Oh. And he's um, like, Grandma, we need to go swimming. Well, this grandma has no swimming bathing suit, right? <laughs> I haven't worn a bathing suit in years. I did a triathlon, of, you know, 10 years ago and had to have a bathing suit for that. But... So I'm thinking um, this would probably, this could be a really good way for me to be really comfortable in getting in that and finding a great bathing suit and just, you know, claiming it and swimming with my grandkids. Absolutely. I love those, that. those moments, we can't miss those moments right now. And do you think the, the grandkids are going to point at anything or make any comments? They're about swimming with grandma, right? right. And, and I, I can personally definitely to connect with that. It took me many, many years after going through uh, my hysterectomy and changes in my body that I had no control of. It took a lot for me and I finally, that's what did it. It was the grandchildren. 
let's go out on the beach. And I said, you know what? Life is passing by. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm Linda, as soon as we can, you know, get in that studio again, um, Karen, you know, you're my uh, witness. Schedule me. Oh. <laughs> schedule <laughs> me. Yeah. Quote here that I love, and it's under all the layers the world has placed upon her, she found herself. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Thank that you. Gives, that that gives me goosebumps. That's <laughs> fabulous. That's mm -hmm. fabulous. Yeah. So, and so I just, you know, thank you so much, Linda, because I think about so many things, and I especially see it um, in my teenage daughter. There's so many things that, like you Sherry said, that you do or you don't do based on how you feel other people think you look. And so and I, it, and it's great. It is a gift. T thank you. And you're a gift. It oh, was all you. meant to happen. And Sherry is right? a gift. Okay, we're all, yeah, we're all <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We were, it was all meant to happen. We were to meet. Yeah. It's part of our journey. As part um, of our journey. Like, yeah. like you said earlier, Karen, you know, notice the people who are showing up just even um, peripherally. Um, yeah. But, but I, you said something a second ago that I, I just want to come back to. It's that, you know, we make often <clears throat> those decisions to not participate without even claiming it as a decision right mm -hmm. it's like okay well um i don't wear a bathing suit so i'm not going to go out on that boat or i'm not going to go to this event or i'm not going to you know blah whatever that story is mm -hmm. um and so it can limit us in a gazillion ways without us even really being aware of it right do you so, want to know something great my uh, daughter says all the time? She says, you know what, mom? Skinny is not a personality trait. <laughs> I'm like, but, but good for yeah. her that yeah. she gets it. Um, you know, another side of my business, and it's not on the boudoir side, is I work with tweens and teens. And it's important getting those tweens at those early ages so they're not caught with the media and all that stigma, right? Mm -hmm. um, really, really important that we start them young. I love that about you too, Linda, because not many people, you know, run towards that age group, right? I'm, yeah. We all kind of want to work with those kids, but it really is important because really, I know um, me as a child and watching my own daughter, just like I'm fire, like, you know, I can do anything. I'm the best yes. dancer. I'm a princess. And then all of a sudden it turns into, you no, know, I want to cover myself up and yeah. you sort of bridge that gap and you're starting that and that's wonderful and thank you for that well. i think it's important absolutely yeah very um, important i just have one more question um okay <laughs> um and we can we can talk um what do you find um people value most about themselves is there a common thread mm. ah do you see so my brain initially <laughs> first went to body but it isn't even body is um, it something yeah and i'm gonna say yeah i'm gonna say unfortunate it's uh we just all want to be liked and loved and approved right and i think we still even if we say that we aren't looking for that i think we still all, always are looking for approval or or um appreciation or to be and to be seen yeah and to be seen and that so, yeah that's perfect and and it's um and an appreciation i think it just it, again with you know we kind of touched on this at, at the beginning of the show but coming back to is a great way to kind of cycle back is so many of <clears throat> the issues that we have right now in the world today are and just even take it back to what you know my own my own space as an individual is that um just being feeling valued and appreciated as i am as we are right yeah. we Seen, don't have heard. to be, yeah. we don't have to be different than who we are we're just yeah. loved and appreciated as we are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's the great thing about you linda is that you um you see that through your lens and you're able to see those people through your lens somehow. You're a light worker, you're wonderful, and we really appreciate it. Thank you. And you're gonna get me all emotional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do amazing work, Linda. I've seen you. The, the results of it and I can't wait to experience. I mean, my, my daughter-in-law is hysterical. She, she's an avid, avid picture taker like you are. And so if anybody 
says, oh, I don't want to be in the picture. And she said, that's about you. You know, mm -hmm. that's about mm -hmm. you. What is it about you that doesn't want to be in the picture? You know, Interesting. Say, My yep. husband uh, will tease me no matter where we are. There's always the mom taking the picture of the husband and kids. So oh, mom's mm -hmm. never in the picture. And exactly. we couldn't even go for a trail walk without me stopping and saying, hey, let me take your phone and let's get a photo of all of you. Because yeah. these children are going to down the road look and say, where was mom in all these images? Right? He's, he says, yeah. you're kind of like the cruise director. And you know how they're always <laughs> yeah. chasing you to get a photo? Yeah. But seriously, it, it has what? always been that way. <laughs> That's fabulous. I love that. I love that. It's so, important that the women are in there. It, Linda, it that, is. Yeah. It is. Because if they're actually, not in the picture, then where were they? That's right. Like, right. That's actually really affected my life in a lot of ways with my mother. My mother does not like her picture taken at all. Mm -hmm. And I don't know many, how many times we've been like wanting to post something on Facebook for Mother's Day oh. or a picture of your mother. And we always, it, it makes us feel um, bad. We're like, we don't even have one picture of our mom. Oh. And um, so she's getting better about it. Um, yeah. And so we, we put it out there to her friends. We're like, if anybody has a picture of mom, please send it to us. So we have older pictures of our mom or mom with dad, but there's like no just mom pictures. So it really, it really does sort of affect us, yeah. you know? Yeah. It does. It's so, family, family history too. So absolutely. exactly, exactly. And mom is uh, the reason why we're here and mom is part of the love mm -hmm. and mom is important. So um, this is going out to you, Tony Fa. We want you to get your picture taken too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> my, my, my kids know if they want pictures of me, they have to call their Auntie Kathy um, because she's the one who has the pictures because I won't have them. So, um, see, I know oh I get it. It's, it's so true. It so, is. Um, well, thank you so much, uh, Linda, for being here with uh -huh. us and today and sharing this, uh, helping us to uh, learn to uh, or have tools, I guess, tools that we can learn to love ourselves more. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, I say pu push yourself, be uncomfortable. Yeah. It's worth it. It's Definitely. so worth it. It's so worth it. Well, thank you. Is it, Karen, anything else that you want to um, say before we wrap up? Um, I'm just so thrilled to have you today, Linda. Um, you're so you. lovely. And um, it was a great experience and thank you. I feel like um, your pictures and your photographs are gonna just keep um, elevating me and I have more ideas to do more in the future and I really wonderful appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you to both of you. Oh, thank, thank you. you <laughs> yes. I feel all the love. I think yeah. you accomplished. Yeah. Feel all the love, yes. <laughs> all right, so- Love you guys. Next, all right, have a great week, next, ladies. You too. Thank Bye -bye. you, bye-bye. This has been Karen Kalmasan and Sherry Richards. Thank you for joining us on our collective today and Inspired Good Fat Life. Please join us on Facebook at Inspired Good Fat Life. Be well. Until next time. All right. All right. Got you clear. Okay. How was that, Dave? Thanks, Dave. Linda? Dave? Yeah. <laughs> How was it? Was it okay? Yeah. You think we're getting better, a little bit more casual, a little bit more into it? Definitely. Flow. Like I said, I mean, everyone's going to flow a little bit better. That's how that works. And Linda, you were a great guest. Thank you so much.